Hi everybody. Last week we introduced our course with a question and that question was what is history? Today what I'd like to deal with is a framework on which we can explore Am Yisrael's journey through time. Now behind me on the board you'll see um, an acronym that many of you may be familiar with. Right? The word is Pardes. Right? Its constituent members are Pshat, Remez, Drash, and Sod. And I want to engage exactly what the meaning of these words are and then hopefully offer them to you as a framework in which we can understand Jewish history. Now, first of all, many of you may be familiar with this acronym in terms of textual analysis. So let's talk about the meanings of the words. Pshat, the plain meaning of the text. Now, leaving aside all the postmodern problems that may pop up in your mind when I say the phrase plain meaning of text, we'll just keep it simple. It's what the text actually says. Remez, literal meaning, is a hint. And we take this as meaning in local context. This is the emotional subtext. This is the uh, nuanced reading. It's what's not explicitly stated, but is implied due to the local context of what we're looking at. The drash is meaning in total context. Now, this takes a little bit more fleshing out. What exactly does that mean? First of all, let's remember, lidrosh in Hebrew means to seek. This is a seeking of meaning. So where do you seek meaning? Particularly if what you're seeking is the truth. Well, you seek it wherever it can be found, right? The drosh, to seek, drosh, meaning in total context. What's the context? The whole Torah. This is why often if a person reads a midrash, one of their first instinctive reaction is, well, that's totally out of context, which is true in terms of remez, but not true in terms of drosh, because in drosh, the meaning is in total context of the entire Torah, written, oral, etc. The last level here is sod. Sod in its simplest sense means secret. People often associate this level of meaning with the mystical aspects of the Torah, the Kabbalah, as many call it. That's not my intention here. I'm simply going to offer a meaning which I believe is totally faithful to the concept, which is this is meaning understood but not communicated. A sod is something that you don't tell others. So that's how these terms are used in terms of textual analysis. How are they used, or how will I attempt to use them, to build a framework for Jewish history? Well, let's look at it this way. Pshat, the plain meaning, is the time of the Avot. Right? The forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, right? who are essentially the spiritual organizing principles of the Jewish people. I don't have the time, and this is not the context, for fleshing out for you exactly what that means, but I'm going to ask you just to imagine that the stories of the forefathers in the book of Breshit are what offer the way of being within which the Torah expects you to live. Now, this phase of history, and that's what I'm going to argue that it is. By the way, it's important to note that many other cultures have a notion of the phase of history. We could even call this the mythic era without getting into the problematics of how the word mythic is used. These are the grand spiritual archetypes within which we choose to dwell. It's the story that we tell ourselves to locate ourselves in time and space. Other cultures, one example that comes to mind for me is that the Aboriginal peoples of Australia have a time in history that they call dream time. And this is when that the boundary between the things that we often defied as a dream and real was so thin that the distinction was more or less meaningless. Now for our purposes, this time period will reach its culmination at Matan Torah, at the giving of the Torah. Now you recall last week we ended with this powerful image of Mount Sinai in the middle and all of the people ringing the mountain and the challenge that this poses to Thucydides' notion of history as facts equal the truth, when the reality is you would have to ask every single person there what exactly what is it they saw, what did they experience, and you would have to somehow bring them together into one comprehension of the truth. Remember, the Torah asserts absolute truth absolutely, but it does it knowingly to subjective creatures. And our only hope as a people to get a handle on the truth is the fact that collective experience mutes the subjectivity of existence. So Pshat begins with the forefathers, or really begins at creation, right? It will take us all the way to Sinai. What happens at Sinai? At Sinai, these, let's call them abstract spiritual organizing principles, get their primary form, and that's the Torah. Now, the Torah is many things, and as I said, this is not the context within which to flesh out exactly what it is, but I'm going to borrow a concept from the Maharal which he, of course, is drawing from our classical sources, where he says the Torah, kishmo kenhu, just as its name, so it is, right? Torah is instruction, hora'ah, and it's instruction for a derech, an instruction for a way. This is 
the message that is given to the Jewish people, but in the same way that DNA is a message. What do I mean? It's a message that creates its messenger. It's a message that shapes its messenger through the time. As the messenger carries the message, they are simultaneously the messenger and the message, right? There will be a difference between genotype, the essential message in its abstract, and phenotype, its form of expression at any particular time in history. This is an idea we'll come back to. So if you're not familiar with it, you put it on the side and we'll see it again. So what is the next phase of history? I'll argue that remez, meaning in local context, will be the time when prophecy and kingship join together to build the first temple period. Now, it's true the first temple doesn't appear until about the middle of this period. I'll consider it from the time of the crossing of the Jordan until the destruction of the first temple and the beginning of the Babylonian exile, which is where, after our introduction, by the way, we will actually start the more structured form of this course. Right? The, the piece that we need to understand here is that the avot are the spiritual archetypes, the uh, organizing principles of the people, then this is the period of the development of the Ruach Yisraeli, the Jewish spirit, right? This primary form, tool for this will be nevuah, will be prophecy, hearing and channeling and speaking in the voice of God, right? That's the living spirit, and the structure will be malchut, kingship. Now, we're going to spend some significant time when we touch in the book of Daniel talking about what exactly kingship is, but I just want you to keep those two images in mind, that this time period of meaning, search for truth in a local context, is characterized by prophecy and kingship. And by the way, this is the context within which Am Yisrael could say, God created the world only for us, and never ask any questions about what other cultures would think. This is the time of the culmination of the Book of Devarim. If you ask yourself, what's the primary relationship between Am Yisrael and the rest of the nations of the world as articulated in the Book of Devarim? A quick glance will tell you, destruction. Get them out of the way. They're what stand between you and the land, you and your purpose. Now, that would make me a little uncomfortable if it weren't for the book of Isaiah. When it opens up the book of Isaiah, and suddenly we realize that the relationship has shifted radically. Now, a light unto the nations. My house will be a house of prayer for all people. Suddenly, the nations of the world become not only part and parcel, but essential to the fulfillment of the mission of the Jewish people. It's a bit confusing. By the way, if you're interested for a further look, Take a look at the first chapter of the Masechet Avodah Zarah in the Gemara. You'll see an amazing treatment of this in the first Mishnah. But again, not the time or place. For our purposes, I want you to understand that this is the internally focused development of the Ruach Yisraeli. Now, this, as I said, will more or less come to an end with the first temple's destruction. And we will begin the formal portion of our course there. But I want to continue fleshing out for you the big picture before we get on our way. The period of Drush. The period of Josh will be compare and contrast in search for truth. Analyze, accept, and reject. Right? Now, this means that the search for truth has left our local context and must go everywhere. And in fact, it will be from the end of the uh, First Temple period all the way through, well, I'll actually not mention now all the way through where, we'll see what we see when we get there. But nevertheless, this will be a prolonged search for the truth wherever it takes us. The things that we need to understand about this time is there must be a very strong sense of self, national identity, systems, boundary to the nation. In order to be able to relate in a compare and contrast relationship, it will pose particular problems and offer particular opportunities. Right? This period, as I said, will begin with the rebuilding of the Second Temple, and we'll speak about exactly where. The last phase, the phase of Sod, is a time when difference can no longer be reconciled without reducing the meaning of each particular side. What do I mean? Is that if I have a thought inside myself and I want to articulate it to you, I have to bring it into words. And those words have to represent common values and common meaning. In order to do that, I have to essentially reduce my internal experience into a shared meaning. And that's going from Sod into Drush. This is the time when there is no reconciliation any longer. There's no compare and contrast. There's only the building of vessels that can hold contradictory meaning in an effort to create a more whole truth. This structure, Pshat, Remes, Drash, Sod, will offer us the opportunity to realize that just as one delves within the depths of the Torah and continually finds new meanings, so too one can pursue the path of Am Yisrael through history and find a deeper truth.